today we are going to study our fourth growth hormone that is ethylene. Ethylene is also called as gaseous hormone because it is always present in the form of gas. Okay. Total nine characteristics or nine functions we are going to study which is very important. See, I'll tell you how to keep this in mind. Okay. So first we'll proceed with the first function or first characteristic ripening of hormone means ethylene is responsible for bringing ripening of the fruit. Now you should know what is the meaning of ripening. So I'll give you one example. Suppose one mango tree is there and fruits are there. If the fruits are green in color means what we can say those fruits are immature okay or unripe. Afterward, after a particular period of time, when this fruit becomes yellowish in color or orange in color, orange in color, and it becomes little bit pulpy, then we can say this mango is ripe. So that process is called as ripening. So who is bringing this change? Ethylene hormone is responsible for bringing the ripening in the fruit. Okay. So first point is R. R means it is responsible for bringing the ripening of the fruit. Next function is it accelerates. Accelerates means it speed up. It accelerates the abscission. Acceleration means accelerate means speed up. Now what is the meaning of abscission? I tell you if suppose this is a plant okay and this is leaf. When this leaf become mature naturally it is going to fall okay and before falling many times you might have seen it becomes a yellowish in color okay. Now, what happens as soon as this leaf becomes fully mature, then what happens? There is formation of one layer. Okay. When aging takes place, senescence takes place, when this leaf is fully mature, what happens? This ethylene results into the formation of one layer. This layer is formed at the base of the leaf. This layer is called as abscission layer. Okay, so who is responsible for bringing this abscission? Naturally, ethylene. Ethylene results into the formation of abscis, abscis, abscission layer. And because of this abscission layer, there is falling of fruit, leaf or flowers. Okay, so you can say it accelerates or it speed up the process of abscission. Okay, A. Next one is initiation. Initiation means starting. Initiation of lateral roots means suppose this is the main root. Okay. And these are the lateral roots. Who is responsible for the formation of lateral roots? Initiation means starting. Ethylene is responsible for the formation of lateral roots. So I for initiation of lateral roots. Next one is epinestic. Sorry. Next one is senescence. Senescence means what? Aging. Okay, in our body also aging takes place. In the similar way, in the plant body also aging takes place. So, in plant body, who is responsible? Again, the same hormone. Ethylene is responsible for bringing senescence or to bring aging in the plant body. So, for S, it is, it is responsible for bringing senescence in the plant body. Next one is epinestine. Epinestine means dropping. Falling, falling of flowers, fruits and leaves, that process is called as epinesty. The same hormone ethylene brings about the, is responsible for the formation of leaves, of flowers and fruits. Okay, so E for epinesty. Next one is apical dominance. See how oxygen is responsible for the formation of the apical, uh, for the formation of the, or for the elongation of the plant body. Oxygen do not allow the lateral branches to grow. In the same way, ethylene is also doing the process of apical dominance. It is only the apex is dominating the other parts. Means it do not allow the lateral buds to grow. Okay. So next one is it is responsible for apical dominance. Next one is inhibits. Inhibits means it stops. It inhibits the growth of lateral bud means it do not naturally apical dominance means it is growing like this only and it do not allow the lateral buds to grow or it stops the growth of, of uh, lateral buds. So I for it inhibits or it stops the growth of lateral buds. Next one is dormancy. Dormancy of buds and seeds. 
8 it is doing here it is doing the negative role it do not allow the bud to open into flower or to open into leaves and it do not allow the seeds to germinate okay so it it is responsible for dormancy of buds and seed it maintains the dormancy d for dormancy next one is degreening effect degreening you might have seen suppose this is a plant and this is a leaf all the leaves are green in color but before senescence before dropping they become so yellowish in color means their green color had lost so that effect is called as degreening effect so who is responsible see this ethylene is responsible for senescence also for abscission also so for degreening effect also this ethylene is responsible ethylene is responsible for degreening effect especially in banana in fruits also not only in leaves in fruits also citrus lemon you might have seen lemon initially or banana initially it is green in color and later on it becomes orange or yellowish in color means their green effect has lost it is means it is called as it is also because of the enzyme chlorophyllase enzyme this ethylene is responsible for the secretion of an enzyme that is called as chlorophyllase enzyme which removes the chlorophyll and it results into the degreening effect so d for degreening so in this way you can keep in mind ray's id r for ripening a for it accelerates abscission i for initiation of lateral roots s for it brings senescence in the plants that is aging in the plant e for it is responsible for epinephrine that is dropping a for it is responsible for apical dominance i for it inhibits the growth of lateral buds d for it brings the dormancy in buds and in seeds and last d is it is responsible for giving the degreening effect okay so here we have completed ethylene hi students now today we are going to study about fifth growth hormone that is abscisic acid abscisic acid is also called as aba it is the short form of abscisic acid okay now we are going to study certain functions of abscisic acid see first point is senescence see here i have written only one two or three words but at the time of exam you have to elaborate you have to write the complete sentence okay so our first sentence is abscisic acid is responsible for senescence means what senescence means aging degradation when the process of degradation starts that is called as senescence okay now because of this abscisic acid just just keep in mind if the leaves or flowers or fruits are always fresh means this will be against the nature if something is there it has to degrade it has to undergo the process of senescence or it has to undergo the process of aging so who is responsible for bringing the senescence of aging it is abscisic acid okay next one is stress hormone at the time of exam uh, one question can be asked why abscisic acid is called as stress hormone why it is called as stress hormone because it is releasing the plant body from the stress condition how it is releasing step by step i will tell you but in short i'll tell you it protects or it overcomes uh, from the stress situation it overcomes the plant from the stress situation okay in from the adverse condition i'll give you an example adverse condition means suppose here this is a tree okay and here inside the soil very less amount of water is there okay what happens this water will be sucked by the plant okay and here leaves are there leaves are continuously doing the process of transpiration so maximum leaves means maximum transpiration maximum transpiration means maximum water has to be sucked or to be absorbed by the roots and if there is less amount of water from where the roots are going to absorb that water that will be the adverse condition so in many ways the abscisic acid is helping the plant how it is helping many times what it is doing it is closing the pores of stomata if the stomata is closed no transpiration will be there it is bringing the dropping of uh, dropping or falling down uh, falling down of leaves it means in in many ways it is helping the plant
plant to overcome the stress condition. That's why abscisic acid is also called as stress hormone. Okay, so this is our second point. Third point is abscission. Abscission means dropping or it is also called as uh, falling of leaves. See, just now I have told you abscisic acid is called as stress hormone. How it is helping? This is the first way. How it is helping? It is bringing abscission. Abscission means the falling down of leaves. See, if leaves are fall, nobody will be there to uh, perform the function of transpiration. No transpiration will be there. No transpiration means less amount of water will be sucked by the plants. So, it is helping. Okay. Actually, it is doing the process of abscission. But it, in another way, it is helping the plant. Third function is it is anti-transparent. Means what? See, this is guard cell. This is stoma. What this abscisic acid is doing, see when there is a, a deposition of K-positive ions, these uh, guard cells become swell and they open. What this abscisic acid is doing, it is doing the process of efflux. Efflux means removal. These K-positive ions are removed from here and the guard cells become flaccid. Flaccid means the stoma get Close. Stoma is closed means no transpiration is taking place. So in this way also it is, it is acting as an anti-transparent. Okay, anti-transparent means it is not allowing the transpiration to take place. So in this way also it is helping the plant body. Next one is cell division, cell elongation. This abscisic acid do not allow cell division and cell elongation. When once this abscisic acid is released, there is no cell division and no cell elongation. Okay, next one is, now in SDP means short day plants and LDP means long day plant. What this abscisic acid is doing, it brings flowering or it stimulates, means it starts flowering in short day plants. The plants which are active during the, which are opening their flower during night. So it is bringing flowering in short day plants, but it inhibits or it stops the flowering in long day plants. Okay, last one is, it brings dormancy in bud. Dormancy in bud means it do not allow the bud to open into leaf or to open into flower. And to the seed also, it brings the dormancy in the seed means it do not allow the germination of the seed. So these are the ways in which it is acting as a stress hormone or it is helping. Actually, abscisic acid is nothing but it is helping the plant in adverse condition or a stress condition. So here we have completed this. How you will keep this in mind? S S S S, synthesis, stress hormone, A, A, abscission and it is anti-transparent, C, F, D, C for cell division, F for flowering and D for dormancy. So, SAC, F, D, S, S, A, A, C, F, D. So, here we have completed about abscisic acid. It is also called as stress hormone.